This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty, online at madeformoreliving.com. There has been some major change in solar recently. This is a major shakeup in the solar industry, and it impacts everybody in the state of California. And so on the show today, we have Sean Davis with SolarWise, and he's going to be talking to us about what's happening in the wonderful world of solar and it has to do with net energy metering, fancy term, NEM. Sean, what's going on? Ah, Johnny, thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, solar and the solar business went through a major transformation um, last year. And so, l- let me explain what happened. So, on any bright, sunshiny day, if somebody has solar existing currently, that solar system will generate more energy than what that homeowner is usually using inside the home. So, I want you to imagine bright, sunshiny spring day, summer day, those types of days. So the one thing about solar is it's static. You know, it's not it's not flexible. It's not malleable. It doesn't have an accelerator. I can't make it generate more energy than it's going to generate. I can't make it generate less. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's outside the home, solar system's cranking, they're not inside the house, it's generating a lot of energy. Before April of 2023, um, everybody in California that had solar was part of Net Energy Metering 2.0, which basically meant when that that energy, that excess energy was created from the solar system, it would be sent, let's say, for example, to pg e It'd be sent to pg e and pg e would store 100% of that energy and allow that homeowner to then pull it back from pg e when they got home, let's say in the dark, because solar only works when the sun's shining, right? Sure. So the solar system generated all this energy, pg e stored it, almost acting like a surrogate battery for homeowners, storing that energy, allowing them to pull it back later that night, later that week, later that month, or later in the year. So this is the whole true up thing with solar. Mm. pg e gives you one year to produce as much energy against as much consumption as you can, and it's full value. So that's the way solar worked prior to April of last year. I was on a call on December 15th of 2022, where the California Public Utilities Commission was debating or making a decision on whether to implement net energy metering 3.0 heard hundreds of homeowners say, vote no, vote no, vote no. And in four hours, I never heard one homeowner say, vote yes. Yet the CPUC sided with the big bully that is PG&E and enacted NEM 3.0, which changed that compensation rate. So effectively, now when somebody goes solar, their system will still generate more energy on a bright, sunshiny day than than they would consume in the house. But now, if a homeowner does not have a battery, that energy still gets exported to PG&E. But Johnny, PG&E now keeps 75% of it. So, 75% of that excess energy now is taken by PG&E, even though it was generated by the homeowner, even though it was generated by the system that the homeowner paid for, they keep 75% of it effectively. So what you're saying is then they have to then buy that energy that they produced back? No, they don't have to buy it back, but you get less credit for what you gave. So so think of it this way. Prior to this change, PG&E for most people served as a surrogate battery, Mm -hmm. stored the energy, brought it back to them. Now people need their own battery. So if you could, if, if you had a bank that you went to and every $100 you deposited, the bank kept 75 of it and you only had access to 25, you wouldn't bank with that bank. You'd bury your money in your backyard or put it in a safe at your house. That's the idea behind the battery systems now. Solar now requires a battery in order for the homeowner to store that energy. Because if they have a battery, same situation occurs, energy produced, excess, now stored in the battery when the homeowner comes home, they can pull it out of the battery without that degradation or loss. Wow. So people called this a solar killer last year. They thought it was going to end the business because of the significantly reduced compensation. I'd never been busier. It didn't end the business. It just changed how you should build a system now. And it changed the amount of compensation that new homeowners get. Stated a different way, I would say to anybody that's listening right now, if you've got a solar system that you had installed prior to April of 2023, That system has a lot more value than new systems. If you ever go to sell the house, you're grandfathered in for 20 years on that one-to-one compensation. So let me give you an example. Let's say somebody put a solar system in in 2020, okay? They now have up until 2040 to get that one-to-one credit with PG&E, whereas new solar customers right now would really need to get a battery to have it look and act like that NEM 2.0 system. 
Got it. So what would that battery typically cost? Uh, depends on the battery, and there's there's major differences amongst batteries. So batteries today can either be cost savings batteries, which provide that stored energy benefit that I just spoke about. Um, in addition to that, you can have a battery that not only has cost savings attributes to it, but it also provides um, some mechanism of backup power to the home. You mm-hmm. mentioned the storms and yep. people being out of power. You know, in pg e territory, that's very persistent power loss, right? Yep. Smud, less so. Roseville Electric, less so. But in pg e territory, it's persistent because of their aged grid structure. And, and they're a monopoly. They're the only game in town. You buy a house in pg e territory, you're stuck with pg e The only real option people have for independence is solar and or solar and a battery. So that's where those come into play. But generally speaking, cost savings batteries, somewhere between eight to 10 grand, uh, full battery backup, you know, anywhere from sixteen to eighteen grand is 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 a reasonable estimate, but they're they're not inexpensive by any means. No, not at all. And so, why would they even want to change from NEM or NEM two point to like? Why did they even change it at all? I don't understand. Well, it, what PG&E argued was by giving full value credit for the energy that a homeowner produced and sent to them. They give that homeowner a retail value. It was the most expensive energy they bought. In theory, because mm-hmm. even though they're not paying the homeowner, they're forfeiting revenue that they would have gotten had they not had it be that way. So PG&E argued, this is unfair. Solar customers are getting the lion's share of the benefit. PG&E has a huge lobby. They're a big beast in California. And the reality of it is, is I think that they push their weight around, you know, I think they grease the hands of people that they probably needed to grease the hands of. Mm. And effectively now, because the the homeowners did not benefit. California homeowners that want to save money with solar, homeowners that want to go green, this change was not to their advantage. Solar still works. It still saves. It still saves a ton against PG&E because PG&E is rising in cost, you know, significantly and very quickly. So solar still works, but it works less as good or there's less benefit for that exported energy. Energy, um, than people had before. Man, that's that's to say the least infuriating because they're trying to move us towards this carbon neutral. Am I saying that right? Carbon yes. neutral footprint, and they're they're de incentivizing us to do so in the meantime. Correct. That is correct. That is so, just insane. According to that, then why? If it doesn't make sense, if it's nonsensical, if it's a if there's a conflict, then there means there's a missing piece that we're not seeing. Absolutely. There's a puzzle piece there. And and the problem is I think that this is only just the beginning. You know, because if you pay attention to what PG&E says, they don't want another paradise. They want to underground their lines. Undergrounding lines today in 2024 is super expensive. So the 13% rate increase that I told you about before, that was attributable to them requiring or requesting 800 miles of of undergrounding. So 13% for 800 miles. Thus far, they've only undergrounded 600 miles. They want to underground 10,000 miles to prevent the company from ever going bankrupt again because of a paradise or campfire or Dixie fire. So they will do this. It will happen. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take and how much money it's going to cost. But at, at a rough estimate, it's either 1.8 million a mile up to 6 million a mile do the math. Wow. 10,000 miles is a lot of money. And that $1 billion rate increase was 13%. We're talking about $30 billion on average to underground 10 million mile, or 10,000 miles of lines. So just hearing you speak, it got me thinking, and it almost sounds like people are paying twice. They're paying, at least if they're on the NEM, am I saying it right? NEM. Yeah, just say NEM. NEM. NEM's easier. Sounds cooler. NEM 3.0, they're paying twice. They're, they're generating the solar and then they're having to essentially buy it back from the company at a 75 to 25% you know exchange rate. Is that correct? They're not buying it back. They just get let, less credit for the energy that they sent. Okay. So they get less credit. So um, they're getting less credit on that. Meanwhile, the less credit that they're receiving, they're having to pay higher rates on that energy. Correct. So PG&E just essentially doubled down and yeah, for, the, for those that are listening, I mean, you know, my former background was a 22-year financial advisor, and I used to have people complain all the time about paying taxes on their Social Security, because tax Social Security was a tax when they were working. Yeah. So if you were successful enough in, in accumulating savings for retirement, you now are facing tax on a tax that you had when you were working. So uh, you're right. So California is forcing more energy usage on us all, and pg and es charging us a lot more for that usage. So for most homeowners, it's a double whammy. 
Get this, and as much as we talked about EV charging and driving 100 miles on an electric vehicle consumes about the same amount of energy the house does, understand this. Relative to the, the things that are coming, it takes four times as much energy to heat air as it does to cool air. So most people listening to me right now, their most onerous utility bills are coming in summer. July, August, September, massive bills because they're trying to crank down the air yeah. and the AC up, right? Well, imagine if your bills in the winter time are four times as big as your worst bills in summer because now every house has to have an electric furnace or an electric heat pump to heat the air because they're getting rid of natural gas, hot water heaters and furnaces. Where is all this electricity coming from? Well, that's the problem additionally. Right now in California, we source 31% of our energy needs from outside our own state borders. We get energy from Arizona. We get energy from Nevada. We get energy quite literally from Mexico and Canada. Wow. California today cannot handle how much energy it consumes, yet they want to double down, step on the gas, and make everybody consume massive amounts of increased energy in the future when we're not firing up any new nuclear power plants, any coal-fired power plants, any natural gas-fired power plants. So effectively, that that's a great question. But the, for the homeowners that are listening right now, the only opportunity that you have for mitigating this, the only opportunity you have for savings, for any control, is to produce your own power. The only way you can do that for most residential homeowners is through solar. So solar is, in my opinion, the only way to get ahead of this, the only way to mitigate some of it, the only way to reduce some of the liability or the potential increased cost that's coming down the road. Solar is the only answer. Wow. Yeah, it just seems... Like there's 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 all these incentives that the government is pushing on us, but there's no solutions, and they're just backing us into a corner, expecting us to pay for it. Oh, we've got we've got massive incentives, and I think in our next segment we'll talk a bit more about that. But effectively, right now, if somebody's listening, I, I actually have an authored paper that I wrote. It's the it's the 2024 best solar incentives. As a broker, right now, I represent about 11 different solar installation companies. I try to help homeowners find the best company to to install a system that meets their needs at their home, and we've. Got got some great incentive programs. Again, we'll get into that in the next segment. But if you're listening right now and you'd like to understand what those incentives are, I've got a white paper I'll send you. It's the best incentives for 2024 as a solar broker I have. All you've got to do is text SOLAR, one word, S-O-L-A-R, to 84503. So anybody that's listening that wants to know about those solar incentives, text SOLAR to 84503. Awesome. And we'll be back after this break with more information about how you can save money using solar and stick it to the utility companies. Sean Davis here, radio show host and more importantly, solar broker. I represent 11 completely different companies that install quality solar products at fair pricing. And I want to speak to those of you out there in PG&E territory that are lamenting these outrageous utility price increases that we're dealing with. My friends, solar can save you money. The best way to get ahead of this, the best way to save money in PG&E territory is solar. So if you're listening right now, if you'd like to learn more, text SOLAR, one word, to 84503. Once again, text SOLAR to 84503.